Welcome back to the playlist on coagulation. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. So in this playlist, as we mentioned, uh, we're going to be covering the processes of coagulation and its regulation. So basically, how do we form a blood clot under normal conditions? Now you might notice this uh, video is going to be about the kinetogen pathway. And there was a reason I'm doing this first before we actually go into, into actual coagulation with all of our clotting factors. And that's because typically in a lot of texts and images that you'll find in, in textbooks and on the internet, you're going to see some molecules that you may not know what they are. Normally, in most classes, they don't really explain what they are. For example, we have this molecule called high molecular weight kininogen often abbreviated HMWK. What is that? We also have a molecule called precalocrine, another one called calocrine, and the question is, what, what are all of these? So, before we go into the clotting factor cascades, let's discuss the kininogen pathway. And what the kininogen pathway is, is it's a really poorly understood hormonal pathway that ultimately is coupled with coagulation, but it leads to the production of bradykinin. Okay. And in general, uh, the kininogen pathway is going to be more linked to the intrinsic pathway of coagulation, which we'll cover in the next video. So in the intrinsic pathway, basically we're going to have um, some kind of vessel injury, okay? And that vessel injury is going to expose collagen fibers, collagen is a protein, of the extracellular matrix. And it's going to expose that collagen to the blood vessel, and it normally isn't exposed. Now, when the collagen becomes exposed, there's another protein that's circulating in the blood called von Willebrand factor, often abbreviated VWF. And that von Willebrand factor is able to bind to the collagen when it becomes exposed. Now, on the other side of von Willebrand factor, or factor, it binds to platelets. Okay, so this kind of funky looking cell right here with these little branches coming off, this is a platelet. And platelets express a receptor called uh, the glycoprotein 1B receptor. And the glycoprotein 1B receptors in their membranes actually hook onto von Willebrand factor. So sort of indirectly, the platelets are sticking onto the damaged vessel via this indirect linkage of von Willebrand factor. So the collagen binds von Willebrand factor, which binds the platelets. And the process of a platelet binding uh, indirectly to the vessel wall that's been damaged is called platelet adhesion. Okay. Now, eventually we'll start getting more and more platelets that bind once they become activated, and when more and more platelets bind, that's called platelet aggregation. Okay. Now, these platelets have a really important enzyme for activation of the intrinsic pathway, which again we'll mention in the next video, and that enzyme is called polyphosphate kinase. Now, this enzyme uh, basically takes um, a bunch of phosphates and polymerizes them together. Okay, So it requires a pre-existing phosphate template and it uses an, a phosphate from ATP and it builds more and more and more phosphates. And so you can actually have hundreds and even into the thousands of phosphates that are just linked together making a polyphosphate. Now if you remember, phosphates all have negative charges. And so if you have a molecule that has 900 phosphates, it's going to have roughly, give or take, uh, 900 negative charges. It'll actually have an extra negative charge, an extra one or two, but the point is it's very, very negatively charged. Now it turns out in the intrinsic pathway, we're going to start with a protein called factor 12. Okay. Now, uh, just a little uh, word of warning, all of the coagulation factors are given the name factor and then we have Roman numerals for a number. And oftentimes you'll see it written as factor and then like this, or sometimes they'll just write the number XII, which is 12. They won't even put the factor in front of it, but you're to assume that's a coagulation factor. In this form, as I've written it up here, it's inactive. Now normally, these coagulation factors or clotting factors either have to be clipped by another serine protease or bind to something that activates them. But in any case, when they become activated, we stick a little A here at the end, and that means it's in its active form. And you'll see that when we cover the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways of coagulation. Now, back to this, this polyphosphate, as we mentioned, has a very high negative charge, and it's a negatively charged or anionic surface. And factor 12, when it binds to that negatively charged surface, like the polyphosphate, 
it becomes activated, okay? Now, it also requires another protein cofactor for activation, and that is high molecular weight kininogen, okay? So factor 12 can only become fully activated when A, it's bound to an anionic surface like polyphosphate, which is normally produced on platelets, and it also has to have this cofactor bound high molecular weight kininogen, which is normally going to be um, present, okay? And only when those two things are bound to factor 12 does it become fully activated. And so as we mentioned, it is just called XIIA or factor 12 in its activated form. Now, what it can do in one case is it can uh, induce coagulation, specifically the uh, intrinsic pathway of coagulation, which we'll cover in the next video. But what activated factor 12 can also do is it can also act as a serine protease, meaning an enzyme that's going to clip other proteins, thereby activating them. And it can actually perform this action on a molecule called precalocrine. Okay. Now the term calocrine is sort of weird. Uh, it actually, I believe in Latin or Greek, I forget which one means pancreas because that's originally where it was found to be isolated from. But in any case, precalocrine, which is inactive, can become activated to calocrine by some proteolysis by activated factor 12. So factor 12 is essentially an enzyme that's clipping precalocrine into calocrine. And calocrine itself is also an enzyme, okay, when it becomes activated, and it's just calocrine in its activated form. Now, not only is high molecular weight kininogen a cofactor that's required for the activation of factor 12, but uh, it can also be a substrate for the enzyme calocrine. So calocrine itself is another serine protease that's able to clip other proteins activating them. Specifically, calocrine is going to take high molecular weight kininogen and clip it in such a way that it releases this molecule called bradykinin. Now you might see bradykinin in some textbooks uh, as it relates to inflammation because it turns out that bradykinin is actually important in the inflammatory response in the blood vessels. So bradykinin in general general causes, as we see here, I've just listed them, increased vascular permeability and vasodilation, okay, to allow for more uh, immune cells to get to the area potentially, you know, if there's a, a foreign pathogen invader. It also causes increased smooth muscle contraction, uh, particularly in the lungs, so we get bronchoconstriction, so it can play a role in allergic reactions, and then also bradykinin causes some pain, okay. Um, so bradykinin, and in general, this kininogen pathway, so activating factor 12 to get to bradykinin ultimately, is more involved in inflammation. Okay, um, but as we mentioned, we can see up here, activated factor 12 can also induce coagulation via the intrinsic pathway of coagulation, which we're going to cover in the next video. Um, one thing I'll mention also, and again I'll say it in the next video as well, factor 12 is really interesting because it really, other than having high molecular weight kininogen, it really just requires any uh, highly negatively charged surface. In fact, if you take factor 12, uh, assuming it has this cofactor, and you put it on glass, so just like the glass of a bottle um, that you would drink a beer out of, um, glass apparently is a very negatively charged surface, and it can actually induce some activation of factor 12, assuming that you put in with it high molecular rate kininogen. So it really just requires a highly anionic surface like polyphosphate. Okay, But in any case, this is the kininogen pathway, and it's one offshoot from activated factor 12, which produces this inflammatory hormone bradykinin. All right, so hopefully this gave you some intuition on what high molecular weight kininogen, precalocrine, and calocrine are. Um, in the next video, we're actually going to discuss the intrinsic pathway of coagulation and show how we get activated thrombin. All right, so please make sure to like this video and join us in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.